Foundry VTT version 12 is here, but the questions every Foundry game master is asking themselves are, one, what are all the new features in version 12, and two, is it worth updating yet? So let me go through all the major new features of Foundry version 12 and give you some advice on updating major versions so that you can decide whether it's time to update for you or not. Hi there, my name is Afondu and I run this channel called Dice and Easy where I give you Foundry VTT tips and tricks with over 500 hours using this software under my belt. So yes, it is true, Foundry VTT version 12 is out now, which means we have a brand new major version of Foundry and a whole host of new features. Before you go updating though, you should back up your game world so that you can restore them in case something goes wrong. I'll leave links to instructions in the description below for how to back up your worlds, whether you're hosting Foundry locally or through the Forge. There's a whole host of other things that I recommend you do when switching to a new major Foundry version, like cleaning up unused modules and using Forian's copy environment to speed up the process, but I don't have time to go through all that in this video, so I'll leave a link in the description below to a video where I went through all of that in detail. If you want to read the full release notes for version 12, you can find a link in the description below to do just that. Now, let's jump into the new features in Foundry version 12. The first feature we'll be going through was actually voted for by the Foundry community. For every major version of Foundry, the Foundry team does a community vote among their patrons to decide one feature to pick from a list of features. Anyway, what we're talking about now are scene regions and region events. Scene regions allow you to set an area within your scene that you can set a trigger to, and once triggered, you can choose from a list of actions called region events on what happens. A trigger could be when a token enters the region, or if a token starts or ends its turn inside that region. When it comes to the region events, they include the following. Adjusting the darkness level of the scene, executing a macro, executing a script, teleporting a token to another area in the same scene or to an entirely different scene, pausing the game, and suppressing the weather. Fun thing about the weather suppression is that you can actually use it to passively suppress weather within its bounds, which means that all your ins can stay bone dry from now on. Assigning special behaviors to parts of scenes is a huge step forward for Foundry, and all of this is just the tip of the iceberg. I can't wait to see how far the community takes this feature and the wild things that you'll be able to do with it in the future. Next, we're going to talk about a bunch of token-related features. If you didn't already know, Foundry recently officially partnered with WotC to bring D&D 5e officially to Foundry. With this game system update came something called Dynamic Token Rings, which were only available for the official D&D 5e premium modules. Until now. Dynamic Token Rings are now part of Foundry Core, and what it essentially does is separate the ring, background, and creature artwork of a pog-style character token. This then allows the token to be responsive to certain in-game events, meaning that systems and modules can use this feature to display visual updates when, for example, a character takes damage, receives healing, or changes state like becoming invisible. For all you content creators and developers out there, keep your eyes peeled as there will be a knowledge base article in the near future which gives you all the info you need for creating your own dynamic token rings for your modules and systems. It's great to see this feature be integrated fully into Foundry Core as having it behind a paywall earlier didn't sit well with me. I love adding more style and pizzazz to my games, and I can see this feature spawn a lot of really cool modules that make your games look even cooler. Maybe this will be the birth of a dice so nice, but for tokens. But we're not done yet with the token news. Let's talk about token transitions and token stacking. With version 12, you can now select an animation you'd like to play when updating the texture of a token. For example, if you were to update a token's image for a disguised NPC when they reveal their true identity, you could have a fade, swirl, hologram, or other kind of animation play when this transition happens. The selection of animations are defined by Foundry. Then you know how in the past if two tokens were on top of each other, token behavior got difficult and you'd need modules to fix that? Well, 
no more. With version 12, the interface and behavior when multiple tokens are on the same space has been improved. The token on top of a token stack will not get UI elements rendered on top of it from the tokens below it. And stacking order persists, which means that all players will see the same stacking order. In the past, stacking order was independent to each user. So glad to see this improvement. These two changes should make using tokens smoother while providing a cool way to transition token visuals. A great addition to Foundry Core, in my opinion. Next. Let's talk about how light and darkness have been improved in version 12. Light and dark, both are needed for balance. But in the past, Foundry hasn't truly had darkness because before, if you created a darkness source, you know, like a light source, but it sucks out the light instead of providing it, that source only added a visual representation of darkness, not a mechanical one, which led to it still revealing fog of war and tokens with vision could see through it. Well, now with version 12, darkness sources can be created that block vision like walls and generally they behave as you would expect darkness to behave, meaning that light and sight are now suppressed within this area and vision past this area is blocked. This new darkness is also represented by some very cool darkness animations. On top of that, if you have a globally illuminated scene, you can now darken areas of it, for example, a cave or a building, by using the scene regions we talked about earlier. With these new darkness features, Foundry will work more predictably and offer a more consistent experience overall. Next, let's talk about the feature that has me the most excited for the future of Foundry. You probably noticed that with version 11, the setup pages for Foundry got a huge visual overhaul. I mean, look at it. It just looks so slick. Well, with version 12, Foundry is paving the way for this overhaul to happen to the main UI of the software. With application v2, Foundry is providing a new framework for rendering user interface applications in the VTT. What this essentially means is that Foundry has now laid the groundwork for overhauling the main UI of the software, which is slated to happen in version 13 and 14. To get a bit more technical, this application v2 provides improved form submission and windows with the ability to partially re-render window contents on update. On top of that, it provides superior support for modals through Dialog v2, which also provides improved accessibility for those modals and provides access to built-in support for OS-level browser color preferences so that the provided UI is automatically styled to match when a user has their operating system configured for dark mode or light mode. If you're a community developer, go try out application v2 and give Foundry your feedback on their Discord server. Now I know that this feature doesn't change much in version 12 yet, but I just can't wait for a full overhaul of the main UI similar to what we got in version 11 for the setup pages. I think Foundry's UI is all right, but a full overhaul could have an immensely positive impact on the VTT as a whole. All right, next let's talk about some improvements to the dice rolling and grid systems. Starting with version 12, the underlying dice roll parsing now uses something called Peggy, which is a powerful tool that allows for Foundry to define a grammar for the purposes of roll expressions, breaking those expressions down into individual, structured, and meaningful parts. By bringing on Peggy as a roll parser, Foundry was able to resolve some edge case issues where otherwise valid rolling expressions would not be correctly interpreted. Then, for the grid system, it is now completely a shader, which makes a number of new features possible in Foundry Core and for module developers. Foundry has also improved how the grids work, are calculated, and improved navigation for grid squares and hexes. So whether you are a grid-based warrior or a hex wizard, this will be a big improvement for you. Once again, this is some under the hood stuff that doesn't look so flashy, but will provide you a better and more consistent experience here on Foundry. Lastly, let's finish off with some miscellaneous smaller changes that weren't big enough for their own section. Drawings can now have either the object role, which means it is affected by lighting and fog of war exploration, or the information role, which means it is visible to all players 
unless specifically hidden from them. Foundry has replaced the FXAA anti-aliasing algorithm with SMAA, which will provide better performance and anti-aliasing of pixelated edges. The unfulfilled roles module has been absorbed into Foundry Core, meaning that users can choose whether each of their die denominations should be fulfilled via digital dice rolling, manual input, or some other external service like a Bluetooth dice roll. Scenes in Foundry now support a new environment ambiance configuration, which includes options for configuring the base and darkness ambiance tints, light filters, and other ambiance lighting options. Light sources with an elevation above a roof tile no longer illuminate the space below the roof. Holding the target key, which is T by default, while performing a drag selection operation now targets all tokens contained in the selection box. GMs can use the built-in Foundry permission system to give players access to one or more playlists, potentially allowing players to control what is playing for everyone at the digital table. Now then, the big question you've all been waiting for. Should you update? Immediately now, here at the launch of version 12, I would say no. This is because there are likely to be updates in the first two months after the release, addressing some critical issues, as there has been in the past with major releases, so you should wait for these issues to be ironed out. Also, many modules will break with a major version upgrade, so I would recommend waiting for about two months for updates to Foundry to come in and for module developers to fix the biggest issues with their modules and the new version of Foundry. After that two month wait, well, it really comes down to your individual situation. What modules do you use? Are they confirmed to be working on version 12? What's the version that you're on now? The further you are from version 12, the bigger and more painful the leap is going to be because there is a higher chance of things breaking. Also, are you willing to go through the process of updating, troubleshooting for issues, and potentially ditching some modules? I highly recommend checking out my step-by-step -step guide for updating to a new major Foundry version, as in that video, I go through all the steps you should take before updating to ensure the least amount of issues. Link to that is in the top right corner of the screen right now and in the description below. Now, it should be noted that there is one new major benefit that exists when going from version 11 to 12. And that is that Foundry now has a built-in module checking between new versions. So if you're jumping from version 11 to 12, at least that will help you determine if the jump is worth it. There you have it, all the major features of Foundry version 12 and some smaller ones as well. I couldn't cover every single feature in the new major version, of course, since there are so many changes, but this should give you a good overview of what just got released and will help you understand how to better utilize Foundry if and when you update to version 12. What do you think about the new features in Foundry version 12? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on the new features in version 12. And while you're down there writing your comment, I would kindly ask you for a like to the video and a subscribe to my channel since those help my videos reach more people. On the screen right now, you will see another video of mine where I show you my recommended steps when updating to a new major Foundry version. Yes, it's for when version 11 came out, but the steps are still relevant now. Give it a watch if you want a safe updating process. Thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.